Yo, yo, shit. Yo, yo, I'm Curious State Gaming, and welcome to the channel. Now, before we head back to Zelda for a brief moment, let's talk about a game that's been on my mind recently. Alright, so a little backstory. When I was a kid, I used to watch this show called x -Play, which was on a channel called G4TV. Uh, long story short, a gaming and a technology channel that also had some shows here and there, like Ninja Warrior and stuff, but anyway. On one particular episode of x -Play, though, I learned about a game that would become etched into my mind for years to come. That game was Psychonauts, the weirdest yet most unique platformer I've ever played. Psychonauts is a platformer released on the original Xbox in 2005. Now, the game was developed by Double Fine Productions, a production company led by former LucasArts games developers, Jesus Christ, that was a mouthful, with the most notable person being Tim Schafer, the developer behind Grim Fandango, Full Throttle, and many more adventure game classics from that same company that I am not going to say his name again because Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sakunas has you playing as a young psychic named Raz, who after running away from home to go to a camp that's training young psychonauts, he has to save everyone whose brains are being taken and find a culprit behind it. This game was the first time Tim Schafer ever made a platformer, and for it being his first ever platformer, the game is extremely good. Hell, I feel like Psychonauts is a lot better than Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine combined. Okay, let me rephrase that. I feel like it's equally as good as Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine. Whew. And yeah, while the game didn't sell well upon its initial release, it slowly gained a cult following, and when Double Fine was able to publish the game to modern platforms years later, it quickly became a big seller, selling over 1.7 million copies, damn. Plus it has also been considered to be one of the best video games ever made. Hint on the one of the. With all that said, let's not waste any more time and let's talk about Psychonauts. But before we do so, we gotta talk about the elephant in the room, and yep, we're talking about the art design. Ugh. Okay, so right off the bat, when you start this game up, the art design is the first thing you see, and yeah, yeah, it's, it's very ugly, but in the same way, it's sort of charming. Compared to the art design of other platformers, this does feel different, with a lot of the characters not really being made to look cool or cute and stuff. And with the exception of a couple characters, mainly the adult characters and the protagonist and Lily, most of the other kids look like any snot-nosed brat you will see at a summer camp. And I don't know about you, but the art for real for real reminds me of a Tim Burton film for some reason. I don't know why, it, it just does. Other than that though, the art design is unique and different from what you'll normally see in the platformer. Okay, okay, let's head on to the story though. Psychonauts takes place in a camp called Whispering Rock Psychic Summer Camp. That's a very long- okay, sorry. Anyway, a camp basically dedicated to training young psychonauts, i.e. psychic soldiers. During one of the counselors' monologue about becoming a psychonaut, they end up discovering Raz, a young psychic who ran away from his family in order to become a psychonaut. Now, after being found out by Agent Sasha, Agent Vodello, and Agent Slash Coach Oleander, Raz ends up being allowed to stay until his family comes to pick him up. During his first day there, Raz ends up participating in normal camp activities like going inside Coach Oleander's mind, which is a literal war battleground, getting merit badges from Sasha and Vodello, and doing some advanced training. However, he soon finds out that the kids in the camp are getting their brains taken. Raz tries to inform Sasha and Vodell about what's going on, but they end up going missing, as well as Raz's love interest, Lily, who gets kidnapped by a fucking longfish. Oh my god, don't ask. I don't even know myself. With the help of famous Psychonaut agent Ford Queller, Raz has to find who is responsible for stealing everyone's brain and save Sasha, Vodello, and Lily before they get their brains taken. The story for the most part is pretty simple, yet feels like something out of an adventure game. This is especially the case with the game's comedy, which does remind me of Sam and Max with how self-aware it can be sometimes. But you know what's weird though? I already said that this game has an art design that looks like something out of a Tim Burton film. But this also kind of applies to the story as well in some ways. Because like in many of the Tim Burton films, Literally, just some ideas are just nightmare incarnate, like Edward Scissorhands. The fact that this man literally has scissors for fucking hands. However, in practice, it's actually kind of more of a lighthearted story when you think about it. And this right here is the same deal with Psychonauts. Now, the idea of kids getting their brains taken and having to go inside the people's minds in order to fix their issues is completely fucked and literal nightmare incarnate. But in practice, it's actually handled in more of a lighthearted way through the game's comedy. Now, the characters also help to make it lighthearted as they aren't uber serious, and at times they do draw in some comedic jabs here and there that sticks with you. 
Speaking of the characters, Raz is a great protagonist. Beyond being good mannered and patient, he does have a lot of shortcomings that for the most part are endearing because he ends up learning from them as the story progresses. No. Plus the voice actor for him is well, actually yes. really dope. He actually really nails the part. Game. Hmm. Now that I think about it. Who is the voice actor for Raz? Oh, look on here. Wait a minute, what the fuck? Richard Horvitz did the voice of Raz. And mind you, he also voices Zim from Invader Zim. Oh god, now whenever I hear Raz, all I'm gonna think about is Zim. Oh god. He also voiced Billy from Billy and Mandy. What the hell? Okay, apologies for the breakdown, but let's go and talk about the gameplay, because I do have some very controversial things to say. Psychonauts is a better platformer than Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine. Yeah, yeah, I said it, fight me. Alright, so Psychonauts is your standard platformer of the early 2000s, and what that basically means is that it mixes platforming and combat together. Pretty much your Ratchet and Clank, your Jackson Daxters, and your Slack Goopers. But this game also has the collected on elements from Mario 64 and Banjo Kazooie. Now, Raz being an acrobatic makes this well with the platforming of the game. He can double jump, climb up things really well, and can even grind rails like Sonic when it is turned into a Sonic game. Combat wise, Raz can use his psychic powers to fight off enemies, and this can range from shooting them, grabbing them, and even burning them. Yeah, but his psychic abilities can also be used for platforming and for small puzzles in different levels. Now, before I continue on with the gameplay, let's briefly talk about the platforming and the combat of this game, because it's actually pretty interesting. So Psychonauts is interesting when it comes to the platforming, because with every mine you go through, they introduce new challenges to test your skill, as well as adding old challenges to keep you on your toes. Now, the movement is responsive, if a little slow and floaty sometimes when doing double jumps. And for how big the levels can get, it doesn't feel like empty space. Plus, if you learn how to effectively use the levitation ball, then you can skip a good chunk of a level, which is absolutely broken. Now, for the combat, it does also have depth to it as well. First of all, you can lock on the enemies, which Raz can then move in the four cardinal directions to be able to dodge enemy attacks, similarly to how Z targeting works in Ocarina of Time. And here's your obligatory Zelda reference, even though I haven't talked about Ocarina of Time yet. I, I, I need to do that as soon as possible. And yes, this does make fighting enemies easier, but you don't really need it to succeed in the game until later on. Besides, the lock-on system does have some jank to it, which for me, I didn't oftentimes use it. Now, the final thing is that while Raz does have a 3-hit combo and a ground slam attack, Raz also has access to his psychic abilities. Now, most of these abilities are unlocked throughout the story through merit badges. However, some abilities are locked behind your sight ring, which can be considered your level in the game. Now there are a couple ways to increase your sight rate. This includes collecting mental figments in people's minds, collecting side cards and combining them with side cores, collecting challenge markers, and collecting scavenger hunt items scattered across the hub world. And as you increase your sight rank, you'll get additional abilities such as pyrokinesis, telekinesis, invisibility, clairvoyance, and many, many more abilities. And after getting these abilities, anytime you increase your side rank, you'll get upgrades to pass abilities, including your side blast, levitation ball, and so on and so forth. Now, this game also have bosses, which can range from being simple to very, very annoying. And for the most part, though, they do have a set pattern that barely changes, so if you can spot it, then best believe you'll get you the bosses easily. Now, before going into the levels themselves, you of course have the camp which serves as the hub world, and also has different secrets including the aforementioned scavenger hunt. This is the place where you'll most likely find challenge markers and the side cards, but you can actually fight enemies here too, including a bear with telekinesis, and a fucking cougar that can burn you alive. This has to be a violation, right? And for how big the camp is, there's luckily a fast travel system that can get you from one point of the camp to the other side. And finally, in this big camp, there's the shop, which allows you to buy side cores and other items with arrowheads, the currency for this game. Now, the only important item in this shop is the cowweb duster, which is needed for the later portions of the game. Other than that, besides the side cores and the dowsing rod, which helps you find more arrowheads, the other items aren't particularly needed. Now onto the levels themselves, because as a platformer, Psychonauts does things very, very weirdly. And just in case you guys don't know how weird Psychonauts can get, well... Ice lady with die. Die. 
School must get hot. Oh, wait. Uh... Yeah, it can get really, really weird. When it comes to the levels of this game, Psychonauts is unique with how they set them up. Now, in order to even get to the levels, you either have to go into the menu and select the little door item, which takes Raz's astral projection into the level, which, by the way, is a nice touch of detail, or Raz will just do it in a cutscene. For the most part, every level has some degree of platforming and stuff to do. After finishing those objectives, you then fight the level's boss, bada bing, bada boom, and then boom, you're done. However, from the moment you start the mission, and then all the way to the moment that you have to fight the boss, you're going to encounter some funky, yet very interesting shit, and this all starts with the Longfish Opulus. Already, shit's just going down with Raz being Godzilla and destroying a whole section of the city and shit. However, it amps up to you basically doing a coup d'etat on the whole city, and during that, you get bits of commentary from this dude who be spouting the same shit Tucker Carlson does on the daily. Now, where that stage is action oriented, now you have the legendary Milkman Conspiracy level. This level is weird as hell as the main gimmick is to find particular items to use to get past these CIA looking bastards. Oh, by the way, the invisibility won't work, trust me, you I tried many, many times. Sports. And of course, we can't forget the classic scene that plays after beating the boss. I am the milkman. My milk is delicious. The next two levels afterwards are both annoying and cool respectively. You got the glorious Deether level, which is annoying as shit, yet in some regards I can relate to the director a bit. I'm off to go kill myself. Maybe not completely. The Waterloo- wait wait, Waterloo world- water- bleh, bleh, The Waterloo world- bleh, The Waterloo- bleh, The Waterloo world level, Jesus Christ. It's cool too. It's pretty much a board game, but the annoying thing is that you have to do these mini tasks here and there in order to progress, and yeah. And when it comes to Black Velvetopia, I only have a few things to say. Fuck the bull, and this smug ass Juan Decimo looking motherfucker. Anyway though, in terms of the earlier levels, they're just your standard platformers for the most part. Oleander's basic training was a great introduction to the game's controls and moveset. Sasha's shooting gallery was meh for the most part, but it was a little fun experimenting with the combat, and Mia's dance party was actually really fun. But now, ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary peeps, may I direct you to one of the hardest levels of a platformer that I have ever played yet, and a level that made me almost want to draw myself out the window and my Xbox out the window. But first, let's uh, give some context for the story, yeah. Oh, Christ. <laughs> oh. So, the person, or this in this nightmare? case, people in the game that's stealing the kids' swag. brains is Dr. Lobato and Coach Oleander, but mainly Oleander. By using a sneezing powder, they managed to collect the brains of the kids around camp by having them sneeze out their brains. Okay then, anyway, Raz ends up traveling to an abandoned asylum near the campsite. Once there, Raz goes through the mind of the patients there and climbs up to the top of the asylum, spotting not only Dr. Lobato, but Lily, Sasha, and Fodello. Raz ends up getting some help from Lobato's assistant, Shigor, who asks Raz to save her turtle, Pokey Lopi. Okay. That's right, baby. Daddy's here. Everything's gonna be alright. What the fuck? After defeating Dr. Lobato and freeing Sasha, Vodello, and Lily, Oleander appears with Sasha and Vodello battling him alongside Floyd Queller who pulls up in a titanium suit. Why you ask? Because his mind is fucked up, that's why. They end up beating Oleander, but just as the battle ends, the asylum blows up due to one of the patients throwing a fucking Molotov inside it. Plus mix that with some paint dinner and then you get- Everyone manages to leave unscathed, but just as Raz is wondering where Oleander's brain is, he ends up pulling up in a fucking battle tank, with Raz having to fight it. Now, Raz easily defeats it, but gets hit with a sneezing powder and sneezes his brains out, literally. Now brainless, Raz somehow uses telekinesis to draw himself in a tank containing Oleander's brain, which ends up combining both of their psyche and leading to the final level of the game, okay. the Me Circus. Son of a bitch! <sighs> Okay, this level right here, in all my years of gaming, has to be the third most annoying and hardest final level in a game 
have ever endured with and it brings me a lot of rage i mean there's good ideas but it brings me a lot of rage but what are the good ideas at least okay in writing the meat circus is a brilliant final level the level itself is testing your platforming and combat by giving you difficult challenges alongside some of the bosses being challenging themselves but in practice while the level still challenges you which is a good thing the bosses in this final level are extremely easy, including the final boss. Plus, there's two sections. One section that you're really going to hate, and another section that you're just going to want to draw your controller out the window for. But let's at least explain what's happening, so you guys can get an idea of what's going to be going on. In the first part of the Meat Circus, you have to protect a young Oleander by platforming to him and defeating the enemies before they kill him. However, this kid is extremely stupid, and during my playthrough of this game, he will sometimes run up to the enemies just begging, just pleading to get hit. Now, this escort mission is especially annoying because if he dies, you gotta start it over again. And you see, it wouldn't be a problem if it wasn't a long part to begin with. Now, in terms of like some of the good parts of it, the platforming is unique and there are new challenges that, while it's annoying, it's easy to get used to once you kind of get the rhythm of it. However, as an escort mission, this is horrible. I hate it. And now, on to the rail section, to which I decided to save my one major issue for this game, the damn camera. Now, prior to this level, all the times that you have to use the camera isn't really annoying. Yeah, sure, sometimes it can be janky, but it's nothing to the point in which this part of the meat circuits will get you to. Because, oh my god, oh my god. So, when you get to the rail section, you come to find out that the camera decides to become a total spaz, to the point in which you don't even see the shit that's in top of you, or on the bottom of you, or hell, even in front of you either. So at this point, I decided to do the best thing I can only do at this point. That didn't make sense, but long story short, I tried to cheese it, and I died the same amount of times doing it normally, and that it was a lot. But besides all of that, the rest of the level isn't... Bad. Yes, there is some annoying shit, but other than that, it's better. Plus, if you die on the later parts, you don't have to restart the mission, which I'm extremely glad about. Well, with that said, Raz ends up being Oleander for good, and soon gets promoted by Queller to be a true Psychonaut. However, before it becomes all happy ending and shit, Sasha and Vodella finds out that the head of Psychonauts and Lily's father, Truman Sonato, has been kidnapped. And soon, the game ends with Raz joining Sasha, Vodello, Oleander, and Lily off to save Truman. Eh, not a bad ending. But overall though, what do I think about this game? Okay, so this game is really fun, but it does have some flaws to it, albeit nothing too major. One issue I noted was the game's camera, but another issue with this game is that you will get lost and confused on how to progress the story. And yes, there is a map to show you where to go next, and a hint page in the menu. However, they don't give you a... How should I explain it? They don't give you a clear idea of how to progress into the next level and this is especially the case when you're in the levels themselves because as much as i love the milkman stage his level and gloria's level are some of the worst when it comes to not telling you where to go and what to do i mean other than that though the game is really good the gameplay is fun and does allow some level of exploration especially when going after the emotional baggage shit i forgot to add that in there um Long story short, the emotional baggage in this game is only there for collectibles, nothing else. Speaking of which, this game's collectathon elements are extremely fun to go after, and it does remind me of trying to 100% complete Mario 64. The visual, of course, as weird and zany as they are, is pretty unique. The music is not bad, but for me, just wasn't memorable. But the graphics now, yeah, the graphics itself were really memorable, especially in the Black Veltopia level and how it's largely neon. Um, but yeah, beyond that though, I actually really like this game. So with that said, should you play Psychonauts? Yeah, most definitely, and luckily, there's a lot of platforms that you can play it on. If you have an Xbox, you can get the game on Xbox's Game Pass or just buy it normally. Now, it also had a release on the PS2 if you want to try that version out, but if not, then it's also on the PS4 and I think on the PS5 as well, I like to say. And of course, it's also on PC as well. And with that though, thank you guys so much for watching to the end of the video. So, the next game that we are going to be reviewing is Psychonauts 2, which is kind of the reason why this video took a little long to come out. Because I've just been playing that shit because it was so damn good. 
And yeah, long story short, I have a lot of great things to say about that game. Um, but yeah, other than that, though, make sure to like and subscribe, and stay safe, stay vibing, my guys.